Uh, knowing that uh, today's Rosh Chodesh uh, and that we would uh, start late and um, which helped me uh, with a with a, an important decision. I don't know if you say an important decision, but anyway, I decided that with all the heaviness that's going around in the world and all these deep things that we've been talking about, um, I don't know how long, and then, um, you know, being home alone for this week, uh, I've been watching a lot of movies and some of them were good movies were very deep and very heavy. So I decided we just ought to do something fun this morning. Well, I don't know if it's fun, but it's light, light anyway. It's a little lighter than uh, our, our normal topics. Um, so I need to start by asking you all a question. What do you call someone who knows to speak three languages? Trilingual. Trilingual, right? And someone who speaks two languages? Bilingual. And someone who only speaks one language? American. That's American. the question. <laughs> yes. OK. So what does this have to do with this week's Parsha? OK. <laughs> you haven't even gotten the answer in your head. It's laughing already. OK. Uh, to answer that, um, let me just, show you the text real quick. Can everybody see that? It's chapter, chapter 11. Labrioots. What's that? Somebody sneezed. I said Labrioots. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is chapter 11 of Breshit. Uh, comes near the end of the Parsha. Everyone on earth had the same language and the same words. And they migrated from the east. They came upon a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them hard. Bricks serve them as stone and bitumen serve them as mortar. And they said, come, let us, come, let us build us a city and a tower with its top in the sky. <coughs> <coughs> me. to make a name for ourselves else we shall be scattered all over the world the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower man had built and the Lord said if as one people with one language for all this is how they have begun to act and nothing they may propose to do will be out of their reach let us then go down and confound their speech there so they shall not understand one another's speech. Thus the Lord scattered them from there over the face of the whole earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel, because there the Lord confounded the speech of the whole earth, and from there the Lord scattered them over the face of the earth. Okay? Um, it's not tower story of uh, the Tower of Babel. is. uh I don't think a, an unknown story. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure everyone here, uh, you know, remember, you know, knows this story. And but it's, it's very simple, it's just a little simple little, what I think it's uh, like 11 verses stuff there in the middle of the creation story. <clears throat> and the Torah then, goes on from, you know, it's actually uh, not just stuck in the creation story, it's actually coming after the flood, where the flood knocks out the whole population. They come back and, oh, everything's fine. We're going to uh, just be one people and, and build up the whole world and boom, now they can't understand each other and they're talking, uh, uh, I guess, what do we, do we use, like, still use the expression, they're talking babble, you know, they're just babbling at one another. Yeah. All right, so the source of all of that. 
Okay. So the situation that was brought on by the generation of the building of the tower still exists today. Oh, yeah. um, and that is most people in the world find it insufficient to have mastery of just one language. The first language being their mother tongue. And people then face the challenge of becoming multilingual or, and acquiring proficiency in other languages as well. In our global world, where we have a lot of migration, <sighs> it's in a lot of communication between countries, it's uh, not just an advantage to be multilingual, but multilingualism could be crucial for mobility, communication, use of the internet, academic studies, uh, personal and professional development, and much more. Um, I don't know, do they still require um, people who go for PhDs to learn two languages? Yep, I think so. When, when I got my master's, I had to have two languages, which was... Yeah, I, yeah, the answer is yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, I heard that some of them... On the field, though. I'm sorry? It might depend on the field. Yeah. You know, the field that you're... <laughs> I've heard, I remember hearing some people say that instead of learning a language, they can do some alternate type of, uh, of uh, ex exercise and, and they get out of doing it. But yeah, most fields in order to get into the real, the, the depth of leadership, uh, literature, you have to know something other than English, yeah. uh, depending on the field. Um, so, there have been a lot of studies re, uh, recently that attempt, I don't know how recent, I don't have a date here, that attempt to discover the process of acquiring a foreign language and explain the reasons why people have difficulty learning other languages. Um, my problem right now is that I came across this information now, not, not 60 years ago when I really needed it. Uh, but in any event, you know, there are some people who are, are looking into how is it that we really acquire language and what does our brain do when we do process this information. So all languages share a similar basic logical organization. So there are really three things that go into language. You have the laws governing the systems of sound and pronunciation, which is called phonology. You have the eternal structure of words or morphology, and then the structure of the sentences or the syntax, you know, the way we talk. So it's said that all language, including, by the way, the uh, sign language, which, uh, we'll, which is considered a language, rightfully so, uh, are processed in specific areas of the brain, uh, usually on the left side. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but uh, the, the uh, source that I'm looking at says that this fact attests that all languages are based originally on common verbal brain mechanisms. Nevertheless, there are differences among languages in terms of specific characterization of their systems. For example, at least some of the phonology of each language are unique to it and different from all languages, you know, which I find easy to understand because all I have to do is talk to my uh, British grandchildren and they, they do talk different. Um, not, not, you know, as they say, what's, uh, you know, you have the United Kingdom and the United States, you know, two, two countries separated by the use of a common language. 
um, you know, when my granddaughter was little, we used to have a lot of fun with her by going and figuring out uh, what we call things that are different from what she calls things, you know, like we go to the, uh, the, uh, the bathroom, she goes to the loo, um, you know, um, the, uh, we, we see trucks going by, they have lorries, uh, you know, and on and on and on. And we were trying to make a list of all these words. And then I went on the internet and found out that somebody had already done that. <laughs> uh, very disappointing. But in any event, oh, and their, and their accents are, uh, you know, my daughter has made us agree that we can't make fun of their accents, um, which are not really heavy, but uh, they are cute. Um, okay. Um, getting back to some serious stuff here. Oh. <coughs> Is that a comment or is somebody just clearing their throat? <laughs> um, so aside from the differences in language, there's some research that shows that there are significant differences between what happens with our first language or our mother tongue and other languages that um, that we want to learn or try to learn or need to learn. Um, and this research shows that they really are built on different mechanisms in the brain. For example, there's a critical age for acquiring a mother tongue and someone who has not acquired it by that age is likely to show numerous difficulties in the, area, in the areas of phonology and morphology and even to be incapable of acquiring any language at all beyond the level of isolated words. So in other words, we all have the ability to, um, well, I shouldn't say we all have the ability, but most, most people have the ability to pick up language at a very early age. Um, some, some babies pick it up right away and they uh, they go from mama papa uh, to full sentences right away and, and boom you know you know as they say you know um, we spend all the time when with little kids of teaching them to um, first of all teaching them to talk and then um, how to sit and behave and then they never sit down or shut up <laughs> You know, I got all, I'm just in the mood for all these little crappy jokes today, right? Um, well, I like them, thank you. <laughs> and they're not well, crappy. There, there are a few other smiles there too, so I'll keep going. Um, the, so whether, so whereas what we're saying here is that if a child does not pick up a mother tongue very early or in younger days and has trouble picking up language, uh, they're going to run into other difficulties as they get older. But on the other hand, the ability to learn a second language or, or third or fourth or more uh, has no age limitation. Um, even though, even though, um, some of us have found out that as we get older, it's harder to pick up that language, another language or other type of information like that. Um, for, um, hey, hold on, I got alarms going off all over the place here now. Um, okay. Uh, I got a new watch and it's buzzing and beeping all over here. Anyway, um, okay. So, mm, 
high. So the brain can pick up other languages as we get older and um, help us to become proficient in them. But another interesting phenomenon regarding multilingualism, further reinforcing distinction between mother tongues and later acquired language, is the considerable difficulty observed in certain fraction of the population in learning foreign languages. Almost all people manage to, um, to pick up a mother tongue pretty easily. Uh, even when growing up in a linguistically poor environment. But there's a great individual variance in the ability to learn foreign languages. There are more than a few people who, while able to master mother tongue without noticeable dis difficulty and possessing a perfectly normal or even high intelligent levels, nevertheless have great difficulty learning foreign languages and are not even capable of attaining reasonable proficiency. Um, that this current research shows that a lot of that is, there we go. Um, where did I go here? The, um, the, the reason that some people have trouble picking up languages is the difficulty they have with their brain processing different sounds. Um, I would add to that too is also their ability to hear. Um, you know, as my hearing it also is buzzing and beeping here. You know, we know that that infants are born with the ability to register any potential system of phonology or the sounds. And the, our brains were tuned in to the sounds of our mother tongue, which basically we picked up from our parents and others in our family and immediate surrounding. Um, so, The, uh, the findings for the researchers coming up with, they fit in with the idea of a transition from a pan-human language based on specialized, specialized brain mechanisms and enabling, I don't know, I just said something. I'm having a great time here. Every time I look around, I got a different device beeping at me. And I don't know what I just said, but something just turned on Siri on my phone. <laughs> um, I'm telling you, it's a from Carmi. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a secret message from Carmi. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, nah, it's even too early for that. It's only six o'clock out yeah. there. Yeah. Um, even though she's planning having another birthday party today, even though the birthday was yesterday, because other cousins are calling. Um, her mother won't. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, all right, where are we? Ward, I think you're, I think you're recapitulating the, uh, the Parsha. You're about to say something profound and there's divine intervention to confuse you. Yeah, exactly. Which, uh, which really, I, I guess is the whole point. And the, um, the whole thing that this, what this guy is saying here, uh, is that Something started at the, at the Tower of Babel, at least according to the text. You know, we started, you know, uh, with all these different languages. And now we see with new, uh, newer research that some of this is actually real, was part of the brain and the brain's ability or inability to process certain ideas, whether it be uh, the verbal or sound or our ability to hear. Uh, and uh, it just started right there. Um, uh, and, to, you know, he's, 
he we can wrap this up with a um, a quote from a, a work called the Torah Tamima, and he comments on the on the phrase one ton. It appears that until the generation of dispersal, each people had its own language, for it says according to their language. And the holy tongue was common to all. When they were building the tower, they agreed to use only that language, and then it became forgotten by them. Uh, by the way, I, I guess I left out one point here that in the original discussion, when it says they spoke one language, according to Rashi, that language was, anybody want to guess? Hebrew. 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 Hebrew, you know, the Lashem Kodesh, the holy tongue. Um, but yet, as the time went on, and with the, uh, the especially after the dispersal, after the destruction of the temple, um, for many, for many Jews, especially, the use of Hebrew was uh, uh, was forgotten. And um, you know, the question is, will we be able to bring Hebrew up to uh, the level of the common language, or we will go? Will we go the way that most of the world is going? and uh, have that be English. Okay, I, I told you it was going to be light today. Of all the languages, I think Hebrew is one of the hardest to learn. Having been taking the classes for like 10 or 15 years, I still know French better than I know Hebrew, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's why it's the holy language. <laughs> the other thing I was going to say is Esperanto, um, which is the international Art, sort of artificially invented language was invented by a, a Polish Jew. So just <laughs> of interest. So I know. Is anybody still, you know, trying to use that? I haven't heard I, that in years. I don't know. I, I actually had a class in it when I was in, in seventh or eighth grade. We had this um, survey of different languages to try to pick which language you wanted to take in high school. And for like a month, we worked on Esperanto. The only thing I remember is Hundoi is a dog, H-U-N-D-O-J. So that's the only thing I remember. Hundoi was a dog. It was there really is, pretty interesting. There is an Esperanto society uh, <clears throat> where people are committed to speaking Esperanto, but I think it's probably uh, about as popular as the Shakers still are. <laughs> Mort, I'd like to I'd like to go back and ask a, a question that's that's um, more basic. I think uh, I, I'm trying to understand the purpose of this story. By well, from whatever perspective. I mean, on the one hand, it it looks like, like an ex post facto um, description of of why people speak different languages. Um, I guess alternatively, there could be some moral to the story, but I'm not quite sure I understand what it is. It, it's, it's troubling to think that, that God would look down on, on the people's achievement and try to undermine it. So, I, I mean, which way is this supposed to go, or is it both? All right. Any ideas? I, I had the same reaction as Doug, only I, I took it a step further. I, th I thought it was really short-sighted on the part of God to, um, to disperse people and to, and to uh, I mean, basically to sow division because with different language comes different culture and different beliefs. And, and you're basically sowing the seeds of, of international strife. Well, that's why I was wondering what the, what the moral of the story is or the... the... I mean, how, how do you justify God's action here? Listen, they, there is a lot of <clears throat> action that's unjustifiable. Oh. You know, Cain and Abel, why does a brother kill his brother? I no, mean, no, no the stories yeah, but they're human. Now we're talking about God. Right. Even right. God makes mistakes, I guess. Well. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure we can say that it's completely a mistake. I think that, to me, what the story is saying is that if 
you let people run, um, I don't want to say run amok, but if you let them have the ability to just mob together, uh, then, uh, then, it, you know, then they get power hungry. Uh, what happened, you know, they spoke the same language and what they wanted to do is build a tower that's so high that they could take over from God. You know, they wanted the power and God said, ah, not so fast. You know, maybe the consequence of that, have you seen, you know, the, the, the warring nature, nature of different nations uh, came out of that. Was that an un foreseen consequence uh, or was it uh, what it was meant to do? But I think it was meant to, to, to knock human beings down a peg so that they wouldn't have this uh, godlike nature to them. Isn't that assuming a lot that, uh, I mean, all it says <clears throat> is that they wanted to build this tower to the sky it, 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 it seems like there's a hint of paranoia there in thinking that they're building this to to take over. <laughs> um, Does it say to the skies or to reach the heavens? Well, probably depends on what book you have. One, it was a way to pass a few months, you know, or a few years. It's a, a, a common project. Um, Good question. I, I uh, close the uh, the text on my screen. I don't have it handy. Uh, so, uh, chapter eleven. Um, I, I, I there. I seem to remember there was something there that said that. Uh, they they wanted to build this tower that would just uh, you know, control things. Bashamayim in the heaven. Bashamayim. Uh, and uh, it's head in the in the Bashamayim, Baroshoba Bashamayim. Okay, and a little further on, this is say I think it says something else. Well. If this is how they have begun to act, <clears throat> then nothing that they propose to do will be out of their reach. Okay. The, the, um, the guidance in Eitz Chaim, the footnote to with its top in the sky says, this phrase is the name of the chief ziggurat of Babylon, the locus of the story in the very tower in question. Esagila, the house that lives its head to heaven. This expression is also found in other Mesopotamian building inscriptions, leading to the widespread interpretation that the aim of the tower builders was to storm heaven. Generally, the Bible considers tall towers to be symbols of human arrogance. And they cite to Isaiah and Ezekiel. Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, we get the sense that the on at least in the, the text, is that people wanted to build this tower and uh, it was a sign of their omnipotence uh, to the extent that they could uh, you know, be all powerful. Um, and, uh, and, and by just simply confounding their language, it put a stop to it. Okay. And, and right, one, so, one right, writer distinguishes <laughs> one writer distinguishes between mountain cultures and tower cultures. Mountain cultures? Mountain cultures. Yeah, the mountain cultures being those who revere nature and adapting to nature, whereas tower cultures for whom the essence of the world is the city and the human-made environment. 
stripping the sense of awe from nature and, and attaching to its social and technological order. Certainly there are those, I mean, I remember at the beginning of, the, of this pandemic, some, there were people who said that this was um, God's um, wrath um, for our destruction of the earth. <clears throat> That's a slippery slope. Yeah, kindly yeah, remember yeah. what they yeah. said about AIDS. There, there are also people who said this pandemic was punishment for, for homosexuality. Well, that, that's uh, yeah. What, what that's it, the slippery slope we're not yeah. going down. Yeah, that's um, the, all the all the stuff. Pick your cause. Um, okay. Well, <laughs> folks, aren't are you were about to say something? No, well, I, I, I slippery slope. I'm mean, talking about all the storms hitting the Gulf and how Jerry Falwell thought that was a punishment for homosexuality and prostitution. But, um, but it seems to me that, I mean, how does building a tower represent a real threat, especially to God? I mean, wouldn't it have been easier just to let them build it and then kind of knock it over? <laughs> 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 hey, go ahead, build another one. Watch what happens. Yeah. Wouldn't that have been wouldn't that have been much more sensible than than dispersing everyone and 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 creating uh, this is not oh yeah, I guess there is a little uh well, I mean the fact that that you know the the, the common language was in effect outlawed seems seems to be um Seems to be a way of creating all sorts of division among among the people, which in the long term was not a good thing. I, I'm just wondering if you're jumping on that last point. You know, just because they were scattered, um, you know, did it really necessarily mean that we had to, you know, you know, be at conflict with one another? Uh, human nature being what it is, I, yeah, probably. We can, we can make a good argument, too, that there are a lot of people who manage to live side by side with and speak different languages and uh, aren't at each other's throats. That's true. There are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two or three. <laughs> Right. How about, uh, you know, um, I guess. Um, uh, there's there's a, another footnote yeah. in the Eighth Chaim says that a rabbinic legend relates the people paid no mind if a worker on the tower fell to his death. If a brick fell, however, they lamented the delay in their building. And they say the purpose of these awe-inspiring monuments created by the technical skill of men was to enable people to forget their insignificance and transient nature. And I... Yeah, but that's, you know, we, I don't know. We build, we, we erect masse votes and they were not punished for that. People Ooh. die, you know, and uh, we're erecting monuments really, memory. Yeah, but on the other hand, look at the problems we have now with some of the monuments we have. <laughs> right. Well, true. So, you know, I, I, I guess, I, I guess we could make an argument that when people have differences, be it in uh, language or whatever, uh, it's, it may be uh, human nature to emphasize the differences with, uh, by overlooking the commonalities. And, and therefore, like Art says, you know, get some resentment and perhaps even take it into uh, uh, conflict. Um, but I don't, I'm not sure we necessarily say that it has to be so. It could be, you know, with with good leadership and good sensibilities, we may be able to prevent it. Or I'm just being rosy. <laughs> so Carmi, okay. just to, to change the subject for a moment, Carmi will be back Tomorrow. by the week. 
tomorrow? Yeah. Cool. And is she on the West Coast? Is that it? She's in LA. Yep. Um, I wish her a good flight. Easy.